All right. Hello and welcome, Workspace community. I am Gautam Monet, or G Money, as my colleagues like to call me. And I'm a customer engineer on the Google Workspace team based out of North America. And I'll be leading today's session, developing tailored use cases that make a difference for your business. Our focus for today will be reviewing business scenarios with the potential to drive the most value from generative AI, providing you with a practical approach to prioritizing use cases based on impact and effort for your organization. And then lastly, we'll be highlighting real world examples and best practices using Gemini for workspace across various business functions, including customer service, marketing, HR, sales, and more. Okay, so let's get started. Generative AI has the potential to change the anatomy of work, augmenting the capabilities of individual workers by automating some of their individual activities. Current generative AI and other technologies have the potential to automate work activities that absorb 60 to 70% of employees' time today. In contrast, we previously estimated that technology has the potential to automate half of the time employees spend working. This acceleration in the potential for technical automation is largely due to generative AI's increased ability to understand natural language, which is required for work activities associated with occupations focused on knowledge work. And according to McKinsey, about 75% of the value that generative AI use cases could deliver fall into these four functional areas, product and engineering, marketing, sales, and customer operations. So across 16 business functions, McKinsey examined 63 use cases in which the technology can address specific business functions and challenges in ways that produce one or more measurable outcomes. Examples of this include generative AI's ability to support interactions with customers, generate creative content for marketing and sales, as well as draft computer code based on natural language prompts, among many other tasks. Okay, great. So let's get down to it. How does that translate into a rubric that we can apply to helping us identify the right use cases for generative AI? Traditionally, organizations tend to apply a product centric approach to determining the right fit between technology and the end users that will be using the technology. This typically means a one size fits approach to all and everyone that creates a gap between business needs and IT capabilities. So what we're proposing here is a more of a user centric approach, which focuses primarily on user needs and takes into account the differences across business functions which ultimately helps the technology align with what the business specifically needs. It, and it's really important to strike that balance uh, between the overly generic view and something too specific, because the more specific we get, the more efforts required and the work becomes less scalable. What that balance is will be determined by the needs of your own organization, obviously. So now that we've emphasized the need for use cases to be more user centric, we need a way to describe them in a more standardized way. So we do that by defining something called a scenario, which simply stated describes the way an activity can be executed leveraging new IT capabilities. A scenario can be a desired state of an activity to be performed, basically a future state that we prefer to be in. A scenario can also describe the link between business needs and IT capabilities, which can help solidify and reinforce the critical role that the IT organization plays in supporting the needs of the business. Um, a well-defined scenario also provides a way for end users to understand how these new solutions can help them achieve more in a concrete way, right? So basically effectively providing end users with a reason to care because they know what's in it for them. But keep in mind that we can't boil the ocean. Identifying your business's scenarios does not mean that every possible process to change should be in scope for this type of change management effort. So how do you get started identifying your own user-centric use case scenarios? You'll want to frame your experimentation right from the start using some of these recommendations. So first, 
meet different roles in your organization, right? Talk to people, managers, individuals, uh, frontline workers, assistants, you know, do workshops, informal water cooler conversations, individual interviews to just understand their pain points, their needs, their challenges, et cetera. Launch surveys to get quantitative data and validate your hypotheses. Um, ensure that these use cases are aligned with the global strategy um, or initiatives of your organization and always kind of keep continuously checking against that because it's easy to kind of lose sight of that and forget sort of that, you know, you always want to align with what your business's objectives are. Um, and then you want to also define and prioritize clear use cases that you'll be able to measure and will bring concrete results. Great. So now that we understand the concept of user-centric use case scenarios, let's take a look at the anatomy of a given scenario. So typically, we will start with how we want to leverage generative AI in a specific task that you will define. For example, how do we want to leverage generative AI in maintaining active engagement on our social media presence? Next, we would want to construct the actual scenario itself. So this starts with identifying the role and user that is the target of the scenario. So continuing our example, in this case, we might use the role of a social media content manager. Next, we wanna identify the particular task that this team or set of users is trying to fix. So for example, we can just repurpose the task we defined earlier around maintaining active social engagement on our social media presence. And then lastly, we want to make a decision or take an action based on the scope of the technology that's in play, in this case, Gemini. Here we might say, so that we can demonstrate high social engagement with end users by using Gemini to generate thoughtful responses to social media comments and posts. So once we've sort of composed that together, here's what our completed example looks like. So as a social media content manager, I want to maintain active engagement on our social media presence so that we can demonstrate high social engagement with end users by using Gemini to generate thoughtful responses to social media comments and posts. So here's an example that will help kind of set the stage uh, so that you can frame your use cases in a way that aligns best with your users, your business, and their needs. So once our scenarios have been defined for the organization and its departments, it's important to prioritize so you know where to focus first. Here's a quadrant analysis that correlates business value against complexity of the use case scenario, which can be very, very helpful for quantifying your priorities, the level of effort needed and the value your business will get out of this exercise. So in determining what fits where, consider the following, right? From a business value and impact perspective, think about profitability, employee satisfaction, as well as customer satisfaction. And then from a level of effort perspective, consider the technical feasibility of what we're doing, uh, the ease of integration, and then the ease of adoption, um, or as we, as we like to sometimes call the technology process and people involved in this effort. And obviously you can see this quadrant analysis uh, favors things that are in quadrant one for first successes and quick wins, and then moving down the, the line uh, into those transformational scenarios and then things to keep for later um, based on this analysis. But we can't have a proper discussion about generative AI without talking about prompts, which is pretty much what everyone is talking about these and what makes a great prompt, right? Um, great prompts usually have a variety of different ingredients. We found that more, more specificity is generally better for getting a good quality response from a generative AI tool. So what does that mean? We like to break it down into the following components. So start by stating the role of the person who might consume the output from, from generative AI. Next, define the goal or general expectation from the result set. Specify an audience so that the response can be crafted in that voice. Set a style or restriction to further set parameters on what the output should look like. And lastly, ask uh, for a format for your result. 
So in these two examples, you can see there is a perfectly reasonable way to write a prompt that can be made much, much better by including these key ingredients, right? Um, note that this fragment, uh, framework sorry, is used to guide us, but prompts can use or omit some of these specific components as needed, right? Um, if it's a simple request, it's not always necessary to be as, uh, as granular and detailed as this, but the more you want out of the tool, the more it behooves us to be very deliberate about our prompts, make sure that a, a number of these components are being included in how we are prompting um, Gemini. And so here, just really quickly, is another set of examples that is also applying this framework. OK, so now that we've reviewed our user-centric use case scenarios and looked at the anatomy of what a good prompt is, we want to take this framework and apply it to different user roles, or what we call personas. So, Here's some tips and ideas for how various teams and types of users can leverage Gemini to streamline their work. We have tips here for uh, many uh, different personas, including marketing, finance, sales, and human resources, to name a few. Um, and then there are also additional user per personas, excuse me, in customer service, procurement, product and engineering, as well as uh, with frontline workers. And don't worry that I'm going through these fairly quickly. Uh, we'll make this information available uh, for your reference as well. But also keep these considerations in mind when you're identifying your personas. It's worth investing your time figuring this out up front so you don't go down a rabbit hole, right? Um, we want to use personas, and personas are great and really helpful because they are these fictitious, specific, and concrete representations of, of target users. They help prioritize features and help keep you uh, keep us focused on the important task um, of our target users. Um, they avoid overlooking any important audiences and put uh, put together a wrong analysis. Right, um, that's the good. But then on the other side, there's also the you know the other considerations that they can be complex and time consuming. Um, they can also you know perpetuate or potentially create stereotypes about a group that are not necessarily reliable. Um, and then the other thing is like when you start getting granular with things like personas, uh, trying to define these very, very discrete, separate sort of roles and ways that users will use te technology. Um, when you have too many of those types of personas, we, we run the risk of not having any meaningful or ad actionable distinction between them. Right. Um, so it's really important to know kind of like where these personas kind of uh, differentiate in terms of how they'll use the technology as well. All right, so let's get into it. Um, for our purposes today, uh, we're gonna focus on four different areas, uh, marketing, procurement, customer service, and HR. And we'll talk through these personas and show you uh, the use cases that we can develop uh, for user cohorts that are each in each of these functional areas across the business. So, Let's start with John. What can John from marketing use Gemini for? Maybe to build a detailed project tracker or to create engaging social media posts, to generate internal comms, as well as build image mockups for creative agency use. Okay, so let's set the scene for our marketing use case scenario. Uh, let's assume a marketing team is launching a new product and they need a go-to-market plan incorporating social media, email announcements, and visual assets. Gemini and Google uh, Workspace will help this team do all these things we just mentioned on the last slide, and here's how. So let's take us through this. The events manager here would open a Google Sheet and ask Gemini in order to build a project tracker uh, for a few things, right? So one is needed is needed materials to create a physical event kiosk, along with information about dates and vendors. Here you can see I'm trying to add as much specificity to a uh, 
a, a request or a prompt uh, is, is specifically in spreadsheets um, because we want to have uh, sort of robust uh, column data. And the more, more granular information we can provide, the better. Um, also in Sheets, the social uh, media manager on the, on the marketing team uh, would ask Gemini to create a social communications timeline for the next three months across multiple social media platforms to communicate the launch of the product, right? So right there, we've saved a bunch of time by having these ad hoc project plans created uh, without having to put much effort in, uh, also leveraging uh, advanced capabilities within spreadsheets like conditional formatting, drop-down menus, et cetera, which we all know can take a long time to kind of futz with and, and tweak to, to get to what we need them to do. So this really acts as a, 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 an amazing springboard from which to start this type of work. So let's take it further. Uh, the social media manager would then ask Gemini in, in the Google Doc to create social copy versions for each platform specified in the social comms timeline, and then adjust the copy for, for tone of voice. Perhaps we might even want to have a few Instagram posts under 250 characters, for example. All very easy to do with Gemini. And then you might see project managers, marketers on the marketing team uh, that, that will also take advantage of Gemini in Google Docs to generate content for crafting internal and external email uh, announcements about, about the product launch, leveraging both Gemini as well as smart chips, which, uh, which are also a part of Google Docs uh, to get, the, get through the process much more quickly, right? You could see here on this on this uh, animation, um, we're using a combination of Gemini uh, and smart chips to get the job done much more quickly. And then finally, on the the marketing side, tasked with communicating to the team's creative event agency a set of visuals to represent the new product line, marketers can ask Gemini in slides to generate original imagery using only text descriptions that outline their vision of the product and its marketing strategy. This can then be shared with the creative agency so that they can start putting together production ready creative concepts and assets together for the launch in much less time, right? And if the agency doesn't use slides, no big deal because we already have all the standard export options to send out as a PowerPoint, a PDF, or a number of other image formats as well. And I really like to point this one out. My, my own partner uh, is a marketer and really you know finds a lot of value in the ability to convey creative ideas uh to a creative agency because i know marketers probably like to fancy themselves as creative but they're not they're not, not always able to kind of build, you know produce that sort of final product but this allows a way for marketers to be able to convey ideas in a much more robust and uh visually appealing way that then the agencies that then make the final production uh, level content that goes into marketing, into print ads, et cetera, can actually uh, build it from something that is a, a vision that is a reflection of what uh, the marketing for your organization wants, wants to produce. So ultimately, in summary, Gemini for marketing uh, can help in a number of areas, right? So increased efficiency, Gemini saves valuable time by automating repetitive tasks and generating content suggestions, allowing us to focus on strategic planning and creative brainstorming. We also provide personalized customer experiences, right? So Gemini personalizes emails, social media interactions, website content, leading to stronger customer relationships and increased brand loyalty. There's also data-driven decision-making that it enables. Gemini provides insightful data uh, and analytics as well as uh, quick content generation for A-B testing, which is a hallmark of a lot of marketing, um, allowing informed decisions about campaigns, budget allocation, as well as target audience selection. Um, we also uh, you know, provide improved visual concepting, right? So Gemini, like I said, fosters creative ideas to take shape faster by improving communication between marketers and creative agencies. And so overall, Gemini empowers marketers to work smarter and achieve better results, making uh, for a more efficient and successful retail uh, marketing team. Okay, great. So let's move on to our, our next persona. Uh, 
Claudia from procurement, what does she want to use Gemini for? Maybe to help negotiate effectively using data from past deals, streamlining communication, and quickly uh, draft outreach emails. All right, so let's set the scene for our procurement use case scenario. A purchasing team at a mid-sized grocery chain is responsible for acquiring new inventory for their upcoming holiday season. They need to identify the most popular seasonal food items, predict demand accurately, as well as negotiate favorable pricing with suppliers. Traditionally, they would rely on past year sales data, industry reports, and personal experience to make purchase decisions. This, this approach can be time consuming and prone to biases or, or inaccuracies. So that's where procurement can leverage Gemini to assess multiple supplier proposals and find the most cost-effective solution. So here we would leverage Gemini to assess multiple, mul excuse me, multiple supplier proposals and find the most cost-effective option. We prompt the AI to compare three supplier proposals for holiday food items and again, here specificity helps quite a bit. Analyze pricing, delivery terms, and product quality to identify the best option. Here, Gemini then provides a comparative analysis, highlighting strengths and weaknesses of each proposal, enabling informed uh, decision making. And one thing I want to call out here is uh, the the visual on the on the screen here is is showing our um, our side panel, which is on our roadmap to be launched. Uh, uh, in the next quarter. And um, it was really going to kind of facilitate a lot of uh, this type of work where you're able to look at multiple documents, uh, pull them into Gemini and ask it to do something uh, based on a prompt or it to just uh, look through the document and give you a summary um, to basically get you on your way to uh, getting your work done uh, without having to kind of comb through uh, tons and tons of documents manually. So procurement can also use Gemini in Gmail to draft persuasive emails to suppliers, negotiate prices, and finalize purchase orders. They might prompt to compose an email to supplier X expressing interest in their proposal, but requesting a X percent discount due to bulk purchase volume. And Gemini will then create that into a professional and persuasive email, saving the time, team, and effort. So, in summary, Gemini can help procurement in a number of areas. So improved demand forecasting, accurate, uh, 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 accurately reduce the risk of overstocking and understocking, optimizing inventory management and reducing waste, uh, enhance negotiation power. So Gemini's insight, insights empower you to negotiate effectively with suppliers, securing better prices and terms. We also, uh, provide increased efficiency, right? So Gemini automates data analysis, report generation, email uh, communication, freeing up valuable time to focus on these strategic tasks. So in short, this example showcases how Gemini empowers purchasing department employees to leverage data, predict demand, negotiate effectively, and communicate efficiently. By streamlining these critical tasks, Gemini helps maximize profitability, optimize inventory management and drive success in the retail space. All right, so let's hear what Barbara from customer service has to say. What can she use Gemini for? To maybe quickly generate high quality personalized responses to customers, to take notes in real time during video calls and have them summarized by Gemini, help give useful advice to customers, as well as improve soft skills. So let's set the stage here for our customer service use case scenario. A support center team handles a high volume of phone calls, chats and emails from customers. They're struggling to keep up with the volume of asks and the required follow-ups and customer satisfaction is, is, is suffering as a result. So that's where the customer service uh, can can leverage Gemini to streamline their work. So in our first scenario here, uh, a customer service rep 
at an electronic store receives an email from a customer who recently received a new smartphone and they're frustrated because the fingerprint sensor isn't working. Traditionally, the rep would, would try to help the customer by, by providing some generic troubleshooting steps over email, potentially leading to a fr frustrating back and forth communication. But with Gemini's Help Me Write prompt in Gmail, we can analyze the customer's email, extract key information so that the first support response can feel more thoughtful. Um, and then we can basically include that in the email and summarize the customer's issues and identify the specific model of phone, the types of issue, um, as well as steps they can take. Uh, Gemini summarizes that problem, identifies the model names, uh, and then it ensures that the customer has all the necessary information um, and has a good initial experience with their support rep, regardless of their experience level. Um, so advice is something that customer service generally needs to provide. And that's something that Gemini can help facilitate, um, especially when, when offering uh, tailored support that seem that makes it feel more individualized for the, for the, for the user. So here, uh, the rep might prompt AI uh, to provide a step-by-step -step guide for a customer who is not very tech savvy. Uh, Gemini would provide various resources, including easy to follow guides, step-by-step -step tutorials, et cetera. And then improving soft skills. This is sort of like a, a broad sort of general thing, but I think is, is kind of important here to call out because crafting a helpful and empathetic response in a customer service environment where you have unhappy customers potentially um, is, is a really important thing uh, to be able to do well in a customer service role. Um, so with the help of, of Gemini, we're able to craft a personalized email response to an unhappy customer. Um, we can prompt it to you know, uh, build an email to the customer acknowledging frustration, providing whatever resources they need, any additional support, maybe even uh, uh, phone assistance or an in-store appointment, being that they're uh, an electronic store. Um, and what, what Gemini does here is it will generate a friendly and informative email that addresses the customer's concerns and demonstrates Barbara's willingness to help. Um, but, but really what I want to call out here is that, um, you know, people have different skill sets and personalities and uh, being able to kind of empathetically work with a customer, take some coaching and skill. Uh, sometimes we have junior customer service reps that join a team. This will really help them kind of uh, have, have that sort of empathetic voice, um, regardless of their sort of their skill level or experience um, in that type of role. And here's one that um, you probably are somewhat familiar with because we you know, uh, support uh, transcribing meetings uh, in Google Meet today, but something that we can sort of take further and take more advantage of, right? So um, we might have a situation where a customer service rep needs to meet with uh, a customer on, let's say, a video call uh, with their customer. Uh, she might use Google Meet uh, live transcribe features to be able to basically conduct the meeting, let's say, hands-free, focusing on the customer, not taking notes, but um, but really engaged with what the customer is saying, right? And when she's done with her meeting, she's able to go uh, back into a document that had verbosely captured uh, all of the notes from the meeting. And that's where we can basically leverage Gemini uh, to take that, doc take that meeting transcription that's been automatically ported into a Google Doc uh, and then ask Gemini to summarize it as well as provide any action items for her. Um, this way she can focus on getting the customer the answers they need in a timely manner and not, you know, spending time on taking, uh, on doing diligent, uh, note taking. So ultimately Gemini can help customer service in a number of areas. Improved issue resolution. Gemini's assistance saves times and saves time, excuse me, and helps Barbara understand the customer's issue better leading to faster and more specific solutions. Uh, we, we provide enhanced communication. So Gemini can help uh, Barbara craft personalized and empathetic email responses, uh, ensuring that the customer feels heard and valued. Um, we can also help increase customer satisfaction thanks to the efficient and personalized support 
uh, customers can feel valued and, and, and empowered to uh, have their problems solved uh, by their support rep. Um, and then a reduced workload, right? Which I think is really important. Customer service is very uh, sort of, um, you know, uh, demand-based uh, workload. So anything we can do to sort of ease that burden, uh, Gemini can, can help with sort of researching, creating content, taking notes on calls, like I mentioned just before, um, and then allowing the, the rep to focus on providing that excellent customer service. And so all this highlights how Gemini in Gmail and across all the workspace can transform customer service interactions in, and, and basically utilize AI's power to understand customer needs, uh, provide target, uh, targeted assistance, and craft personalized responses. Um, this, this allows folks in that realm, including customer service, maybe even frontline workers, to foster stronger relationships and ensure satisfactory and even uh, pleasing outcomes for, for every single customer. All right, so that brings us to the last of our four personas. Uh, so what does Ralph from Human Resources uh, want to use Gemini for? So he might try or want to use Gemini to write descriptions for open positions based on simple prompts, might want to personalize candidate outreach, summarize employee benefits or handbook information, and quickly draft questions to prepare for interviews. Okay, great. So let's set the scene here. Biren, an HR manager at Koala Craft, which is a large Australian retailer specializing in handcrafted homewares, leverages Gemini to enhance her daily tasks and improve employee experiences. So what does that mean here? First, writing job descriptions, right? So Biren can use Gemini uh, to write compelling and accurate job descriptions for open positions based on, on simple prompts. So she might ask, to generate a job description for a retail associate responsible for providing product knowledge, demonstrating strong communication skills. And then we can go even deeper to include uh, skill sets and requirements in the job description. Um, again, the more specificity in our prompts, the better. So Beeren here can also leverage Gemini in the Help Me Write feature in Gmail to write to a candidate for an open position. Uh, recruiters, HR, very, very, uh, getting an influx of, of, of candidates for open positions. Uh, this will help kind of uh, facilitate that process of response, that initial response in, in a way that's scalable, quick, but also uh, feels personalized to the, to the candidate uh, because some time was put into crafting uh, the message through Gemini. Another thing that here that that potentially um, that Beeren can do is use Gemini to write a comprehensive summary of the uh, employee code of conduct from an internal doc, right? So we have a lot of times these big, large, massive docs internally, um, you know, they're helpful, but um, end users don't necessarily want to to go through them and and have to uh, have to read them end to end to be able to understand things like uh, code of conduct or other policies that. Um, HR has to maintain or communicate to their to their end users, right? So being able to take these sort of lar large uh, bodies of content and distill them down so that users can kind of get the, the gist of it quickly um, is also a big time saver. And then lastly here, I just want to highlight uh, the modality of Gemini, right? We're, you know, a, a very mobile, uh, uh, friendly, forward company and you know, have been uh, including Gemini in our, our mobile experience uh, almost right from the get-go. Um, and so you can see here, we can use Gemini uh, and help me write the, um, to basically generate questions for an interview or for a role anytime, anywhere, um, specifically pointing out that this can all be done on the fly, um, regardless of where you are, um, still leveraging Gemini, the same you would get on your desktop. Um, and then be able to do the things that um, you would you would have done there as well, like 
uh, adjusting for for length, for tone, uh, with options to expand, uh, shorten, as well as uh, rephrase. So ultimately, Gemini can help HR in a number of areas. Enhanced recruitment, Gemini streamlines the, the hiring process by automating initial resume screening and identifying qualified candidates, leading to faster and more efficient recruitment. Uh, it will also help with improved onboarding. So personalized onboarding experiences ensure new employees feel welcomed and informed, leading to faster integration and higher productivity. And then personalized development. So Gemini personalizes feedback and development opportunities, helping employees reach their full potential and achieve uh, their goals in their career. And then increased engagement, right? So by gathering feedback and addressing concerns, Gemini fosters a more engaged and satisfied workforce, improving productivity and reducing turnover. Um, overall, Gemini provides HR and empowers them with the uh, ability to be more effective by automating tasks, providing insights and facilitating employee development, resulting in a more engaged and productive workforce. And that brings us to the end of our presented material. We hope that you found our overview on developing tailored use cases for Gemini helpful. Here are a few links and a reminder to uh, not forget about Google Next, which is coming up uh, from April 9th to the 11th at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Um, and with that, we'll open it up for questions. And I believe we have a couple of questions that came in were already actually pre-populated on my slide for me. So um, I will take a stab at these first. So um, first one is how can we use Gemini for workspace in our organization with our own materials as a data set? Um, and I'll read both because they're, uh, they're both similar questions. Is it possible to fetch data from different internal sources such as our support articles, contracts, guidelines, et cetera, and then use natural language to get correct answers to internal questions as a way to efficiently create presentations, reports, or analyses based on that material? So couple of answers here, right? So the, the one way to do it, and this involves our, our partner and friends on the, on the Google Cloud side, is to leverage something like Vertex, uh, which has an integration with Google Workspace to basically be able to pull in uh, specific uh, data and uh, that's from your own corpus within your organization to be able to inform um, how the generative AI uh, provides answers uh, from your prompts. Um, and what, what we do is um, we, we, we have a, a, an integration which allows you to surface that information inside of a Google Doc. So that's one way. There's some you know, um, uh, kind of great, great uh, solutions there. I also want to point out a couple of things here uh, that are uh, on our roadmap, uh, 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 you know, uh, coming out very soon. Uh, something I, I briefly uh, touched on earlier uh, during the presentation was around our side panel which is uh, you know, our assistant that will follow you around in workspace, um, something that's coming out in Q2. What that will allow you, you to do in terms of using your own materials as a data set is to basically reference your own Google documents and or Gmail uh, uh, emails to basically come up with um, responses that are informed by that type of, type of, uh, type of information that's custom to your organization. And the last thing I just want to point out, um, and this isn't necessarily generative AI, but is uh, also part of the workspace platform, is uh, is Google Cloud Search and being able to integrate uh, third-party data into it as well. Um, uh, being able to uh, pull all your disparate sources in there uh, gets you uh, uh, to, to some of that as well um, using the workspace platform. And then let's see. All right, so I think we had some live questions in. Uh, and so let me read off of them and try to, I'll do my best to answer and anything we can't, um, we will follow up with you um, as well. So uh, one question was, does Workspace provide uh, 
an SDK for integration. Um, and so we believe that uh, is, is something I'll need to get back to on. I'm not a hundred percent. I know we're working on some integrations. There's uh, there's, there's ex extensions and add-ons that we're, that we're working on, uh, but we'll get you a more definitive answer on that. Um, when, uh, when we get that answer, we'll follow up with you. Next question uh, is around, can you give an example of report generation? Uh, is it from a Google Sheet? Um, so I am not f fully sure what the context of the, the question was. Um, we are working on, on capabilities that will allow um, data to be populated inside of spreadsheets. Help me analyze, uh, uh, or sorry, uh, help me organize also allows um, data to be uh, pulled into a report as well inside of spreadsheets. Um, the next question is, does help me write in Gmail still put a placeholder in for the name instead of extracting it from the mails that you're that you're writing? Um, I'm, I'll answer this sort of observationally. I've I've seen it now starting to use uh, my name when I'm using using it in, in email drafts. So um, uh, you should be seeing uh, it sort of tailoring itself based on the the you know the context of who you are. Um, the next question is, when Gemini summarizes a large document, can it link it to the sections of the document it summarized so the re reader can get more information? So, so something that we're, we're, we're doing that uh, is in line with that, with the nature of that question is, our, in, it, you'll see this sort of in our standalone Gemini uh, tool, which is a conversational um, you know, chat assistant. Um, when you when you uh, enter prompts into there and you get outputs from it, um, you're able to then uh, check against a, a Google search to understand the source of where uh, the outputs from your prompt uh, came from. To basically help you one, you know, check it for accuracy and just to kind of dig in and understand where that where that information came from. Um, and then the last question, it, it's. Uh, do we have any stats uh, on increased engagement? Um, to, uh, we are working on reporting that will help uh, you understand more uh, more utilization and how your users are using uh, Gemini in your organization. That is also something on our roadmap um, with uh, with reporting that's coming up um, in the next in the next quarter, I believe. And I believe that was our last question. All right. So with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us today uh, on the Workspace community. And um, we appreciate your time. And we will follow up with you on any questions that we were not able to answer here today. Um, thank you so much for your time.